interpretation. It is therefore also possible for a black minister, for example, to lead a service in a so-called white congregation. And this has happened on occasion here in Rochester. Okay, the next article deals with the forgiveness of sins. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is also a central doctrine of Christianity. We believe that the world and man were created perfect. Sin is therefore not natural. When Adam and Eva sinned, the whole mankind fell into sin. We cannot earn salvation or earn forgiveness of sins, not by, by our faith and not by our good deeds. The only way to salvation is through Jesus Christ who died for our sins. God forgives the sins of His children through the atonement of Jesus Christ. This gives a new life to His children and calls them to a new life as born again Christians, a life of love and service. We do also believe that at the end of time, Jesus will come again. The dead will become alive at that time. And then the final judgment will take place. And God's children will receive everlasting life in eternity. That concludes, ladies and gentlemen, this fairly long summary of what we believe as Christians. I've still got quite a couple of minutes left. It seems that I'm speaking English almost as fast as Afrikaans, so I'm almost at the end of the, this little talk. But to speak about the meaning of one's faith, ladies and gentlemen, is not always that easy. Because one does not always want to speak about your innermost feelings. But I will try to do it. The most important consequence of my faith is that I know that I am reconciled with God through Jesus Christ. Through sin, we all know what sin can do on this world. Through sin, man is alienated from God. With nothing that he can do on his own to reconcile him with God. But I know, in faith, through Jesus, I am reconciled with God. I am therefore a child of God. And therefore I know that my whole life is in God's hands. Perhaps you remember that passage I read from Romans 8. I know that there is nothing that could separate me from God and His love for me as His child. And I know that after this life I will have life everlasting in the new kingdom of God on the new world. I know through Jesus Christ every day of my life I am in God's hands in God's care. And this faith, ladies and gentlemen, must change one's whole lifestyle. As a child of God I must lead the new life of this world. A life of love for God and my neighbor. Oh yes, I know. This is often so incomplete in my life. There still are so many things that are wrong. But this is what God asks of His children. For a born again Christian, there is no rule upon rule and regulation upon regulation. But He has that great commandment as stated by Jesus in Matthew 22, verses 37 to 40, when one of the Pharisees asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the most important commandment. The second most important important commandment is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. 
the whole law of Moses and the teachings, teachings of the prophets depend on these two commandments. And then, ladies and gentlemen, the new lifestyle of a Christian, what we must follow as children of God in this world, is summarized in the words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 13. <coughs> I cannot say it better than it is said there. I may be able to speak the languages of men and even of angels, but if I have no love, my speech is no more than a noisy gong or a clanging bell. I may have the gift of inspired preaching. I may have all the knowledge and understand all secrets. I may have all the faith needed to move mountains. But if I have no love, I have nothing. I may give everything away that I have, and even give up my body to be burned. But if I have no love, this does me no good. Love is patient and kind. It is not jealous or conceited or proud. Love is not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Love never gives up, and its faith, hope, and patience never fail. Love is eternal. There are inspired messages, but they are temporary. There are gifts of speaking in strange tongues, but they will cease. There is knowledge, but it will pass. For our gifts of knowledge and of inspired messages are only partial. But when what is perfect comes, then what is partial will disappear. When I was a child, my speech, feelings and thinking were all those of a child. Now that I am a man, I have no more use for childish ways. What we see now is like a dumb image in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. What I know now is only partial. Then it will be complete. As complete as God's knowledge of me. Meanwhile, these three remain. Faith, hope and love. And the greatest of these is love. One cannot be, ladies and gentlemen, a Christian without witnessing of Jesus Christ and of this new lifestyle of those that believe in Him. And I have 15, 10 minutes to summarize, but I, I think I'm only going to use 10 seconds. What I have tried to do tonight is to witness of Jesus Christ not my work to bring anybody to faith. I can only stand here as a witness to Jesus Christ. And the result of this all is in God's hands. Thank you very much. Mr. Amadilat, who will now speak on the region of Islam. Thank you very much. Qala Rabbi Shrejli Sadri wa yassirli amri wa hlu kudratan min lisani yakkabu qawli. Mr. Chairman, Dear Professor, dear brothers and sisters, I was not trying to mesmerize or hypnotize any one of you with the words that I have uttered. Those of you who are studying Hebrew might have sensed that it sounded something like Hebrew. Actually, it was Arabic. I was reading a prayer from the Holy Quran attributed to the Holy Prophet Moses when God Almighty 
commissioned him to go before Pharaoh to liberate his people, he was terrified. Going before the mightiest ruler of the day, confronting him, he was once, you know, he had to flee from the country, had killed an Egyptian, his life was in danger. So in terror he cries out, as recorded in the Quran, Sadala, he said, Rabbish Rahi Sadri, O my Lord, expand for me my breast, meaning give me courage. Why silly Amri and make my task easy for me? Wahlu Mukdatam Millisani and remove the impediment from my speech. Yaftahu Awi, that they may understand what I have to say. Now I have more need for such a prayer than Moses. Because I am here in the midst of Africanism, in the holiest of holy of your educational institution, mostly among Africaners, speaking a far more foreign language than the professor was speaking. See, English and Africans are not as far apart as my mother tongue, Gujarati and English. You'll agree. So English is more foreign to me than English is to the professor. Then there are other barriers in communication. Psychological, religious background, indoctrination. You see, we are all indoctrinated. We are all brainwashed. All of us. We are susceptible to that. And now, with our brainwashing, somebody comes along from the opposite camp, he's trying to steal your loyalty, trying to take you away from your preconceived notion. It's difficult. It's difficult. What is immediately worked up emotionally is tight. So my difficulties are far greater than what Moses had. So I ask the Almighty that He may give me the ability to convey to you my feelings and my faith. This subject is Islam and Christianity. This word Islam, where does it come from? It comes from the Arabic word Salam, Hebrew Shalom, meaning peace. We Muslims, when we meet one another, we always wish one another Assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. And the here replies, Wa alaikum assalam, and on you also be peace. Exactly as Jesus Christ, when he returned to that upper room, he wished his disciples freedom for yet. Hebrew, Shalom alaikum. In Arabic, Salam alaikum. So with that salutation, I begin my talk. I say to you, Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you all. So this word Islam comes from the word Salam. And this term Islam is given to this faith in the Quran. It is not a concoction of man. The Muslims, they didn't concoct the term because they liked it. In the Holy Quran we are told, in chapter 3 verse 19, it says, in the dina, in the Allah Islam, most certainly the religion acceptable to God is Islam. Islam in its religious definition means a religion of total submission to the will of God. That is Islam. And every prophet, every prophet was a Muslim and their religion was Islam. The religion of Moses. You ask any student of theology, say what was the religion preached by Moses? He will respond readily, he said Judaism. I am asking, learn the Jews, rabbis. Where did you get this word Judaism from? Is it in your Torah? He says no. Is it in your Talmud? He says no. Is it in your Mishnah? He says no. So where did you get it? This term Judaism, where did you get this word Judaism from? It's not in your books of authority, not in the Bible. His so-called Tara, Mishnah, Talmud, nowhere. How did you get it? I said, you see, the Jews, when they conquered Palestine, Palestine was divided among the tribes. And that part of land in Palestine, which was occupied by the children of Judah, was called Judea. 
And the people from the outside, they said that the religion of the children of Judah in Judea is Judaism. And they liked the term and they adopted it. But the religion of Moses, according to the teachings of Islam, was Islam. Because the definition of the term is a religion of total submission to God's will. If we can meet Moses at any time in the hereafter and we can question him if he gives us that liberty, say, Oh Moses, what is your religion? We do not expect him to say Judaism because it's a term which he never heard. In his life he never heard the term Judaism. It was not invented during his lifetime. I expect him to say that my religion is a religion of total submission to God's will. And one word for that in the Arabic language is Islam. Christianity, Professor, I message you. Where did the word Christianity from? Is it in the Good News Bible? In the Roman Catholic Bible? Any Bible? You students of theology, you know better. It is non existent. The word Christianity is not existent in any Bible of the world. You have a dozen different Bibles. Nowhere you will find the word Christianity. If Jesus was alive, or in the second coming, if we have the privilege of questioning him, Oh Jesus, what is your religion? I do not expect him to say Christianity. Because if he said Christianity, I would ask him further questions. I said, what church you belong to, sir? Are you an Indian Are you a Jehovah's Witness? Are you a Seventh-day Adventist? Are you a Roman Catholic? Are you a Presbyterian? Are you a Lutheran? Are you a Methodist? What are you? Ridiculous, you say. Ridiculous. Of course, it's ridiculous. I expect him to say that my religion is a religion of total submission to God's will. One word for that in the Arabic language is Islam. Islam means that. And Jesus was a Muslim. Moses was a Muslim. All two prophets of God were Muslims, meaning those who submitted their wills to the will of God. Like Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, we are told that he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God. He said, Oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God. Not as I will, but as thou wilt. One word for that, not as I will, but as thou wilt, is the Muslim, that I am a Muslim. I have submitted my will to your will, O Lord. So Jesus was a Muslim and his religion was Islam. Moses was a Muslim and his religion was Islam. And in the fundamental of the teachings of Moses, Jesus and Muhammad, there is not an iota of difference. Believe me, you have question time. I can spare my 10 minutes and more as the professor had done. I am also prepared to do that. I would like to give you that opportunity. I said in the fundamentals of the teachings of Moses, Jesus and Muhammad, there is not an iota of difference. The first commandment as given by God Almighty with the Holy Prophet Moses in the Hebrew language. I was trying to ask the professor to know about Hebrew and Arabic. So I was sharing with him this fact that I've been asking the Jewish people when I meet them. I said, you know the first commandment in Hebrew? The man generally says, my wife knows it. I said, no, no, I don't know whether you know it. <laughs> so I tell him, I said, the first is in Hebrew, Shama Israel Adonai Lahayim Adonai Echa, which translated, here is, here who Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. Some 1300 years after Moses, a learned man of the Jew comes to Jesus, according to the Gospel of St. Mark, and says, Master, in the Hebrew language, the rabbi, learned man, who meaning, Master, what commandment is the first of all? And Jesus answers and says that to him, the first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. But in his mother tongue he said, Shama Israel Adonai Elohim Adonai Echad. He repeated word for word what was given by Moses 1300 years before without the change of a dot. Same, that in the fundam fundamental of faith there is no change. Same. <coughs> Some 600 years later, 
a Christian deputation comes to Muhammad in Medina and they have a dialogue for three days and three nights. During the course of the dialogue, the spokesman for the Christian poses the question, among so many other things. So, all right now, tell us, Muhammad, what is your concept of God? Muhammad is going to say, as recorded in the 112th chapter of the Holy Quran, Qul Allahu Ahad, say, He is Allah, the one and only. He said, Ahad, Jesus said, Ihad, Muhammad, Moses said, Ihad. What's the difference? Actually, it's the same word meaning the same thing. Hebrew, Ihad. Again, Jesus, Hebrew, Ihad. Muhammad, Arabic, Ahad. It's like English and Afrikaans with regards to certain numerals. You say one, it's a year. Two, it's a tree. Three, it's a tree. Six, it's a ses. No, it's almost the same. As you see, you can recognize. I recognize. Though I can't speak Afrikaans, I can recognize the sound the same. Similarly, Arabic and Hebrew, Echad, Ahad, one and only. It's the teaching of Moses, teaching of Jesus, and teaching of Muhammad. In the fundamental, no difference. Now, the professor was looking for points of departure. But before that, points of unity. Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith for its followers to believe in Jesus. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus. Believe me, you meet any Muslim and you ask him, do you believe in Jesus? He says, no, he is not a Muslim. He might be a Hindu, he might be an atheist, he can be an agnostic or whatever, he is not a Muslim. It's an article of faith. You have to believe in this mighty messenger of God, Jesus Christ. We believe that Jesus was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe in his miraculous birth, which many modern day Christians don't believe today. Your Orthodox churches, the Anglican church, the bishop, they don't believe in the immaculate conception. Many of them, they don't. We believe in his miraculous birth. We believe that Jesus was the Messiah, translated Christ. And we believe in his many miracles, including those of giving life to the dead by God's permission and of healing those born blind in the lepers by God's permission. We are going together. But the point of departure, I must be honest with you, the point, the point of departure is that the Muslim says, he is made to believe that Jesus is not God. He is not God Almighty in human form. He is not God incarnate, God taking human form. Because God does not become a man. This is a Hindu idea. My ancestors, the Hindus, I mean Indian. Indian, Indian, you say, Indian. I mean Indian. I mean Indian. My ancestors were Hindus for 5,000 years. And we believed in endless incarnations. We believed. My people, they still believe. This Rama, Rama, same spelling as Rama Majari, Hyper Rama. No, you can't forget. Rama was the seventh incarnation of God. Krishna was the eighth incarnation of God. Buddha was the ninth incarnation of God. And they believe in endless incarnations. God Almighty keeps on coming into the world again and again as a man. Because they reason, my cousins, they reason, and the logic is very good. But it may not be true. So logic? Can be logical. They reason that God Almighty is so pure, is so holy, is absolute holiness, like a holy robo. Now this holy robo, what does he know how I feel when I see a beautiful young thing? Does he feel divine? Probably not. So how can he tell me? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. What does he know what is to covet? <laughs> so to be qualified, he must come down to earth. <coughs> he must be born like any other human child. And while he's growing up, in the absence of his father, somebody is trying to make love to his mother. And you know how it feels. He's a helpless little fellow. But you know how it feels. As he's growing up, somebody wants to make love to his sister. You know how it feels. He's married. Somebody wants to seduce his wife, now you know how it feels. So he's qualified. Now he becomes qualified to tell you, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not commit thy neighbor's wife. So to be qualified, he must become a man. 
like somebody jokingly spoke about his holiness, the Pope. You see, he made his pronouncement on the film, birth control. So some cynic, I mean his church, remarked that the guy who doesn't play the game, what right has he to lay down the rules? <laughs> Does he play the game we play? His oh, holiness, the Pope? He says, no. Then what right has he to tell us? <laughs> about fertile period and any fertile period. What do you think about all that? Similarly, God Almighty, how can He tell you, tell me, how to behave? So to be qualified, He must become a man. And He keeps on coming to the earth again and again as a man. God incarnate. <coughs> we say, this philosophy is not true. God does not have to become a man to understand the problems of man because the maker knows what he has made. You made the false and beetle, you know what the false and beetle is. And you have a right to tell the people, give instruction how to use that false and beetle. You made this mic system, you know how you made it, and you have a right to tell us how to use this. You are qualified. You made the table, you don't have to become a table to understand the problem of a table. You know what the table is. And you have a right to say how the table is to be used. Similarly, God Almighty, who made us all, He knows what He has made, He is qualified to give us instructions. And He gives instructions through His chosen messengers. He doesn't become a man. He chooses a man from among men, one of us, flesh and blood in all respects. But that person is so finely attuned, he is so sincere to God. He receives signals on a higher spiritual level, what we call revelation, the electromagnetic wave of the spiritual world. And that person in turn conveys them to us on our human level, sound wave. He hears them on the electromagnetic wave of the spiritual world at like 185,000 miles per second. And now when that man of God is speaking to us, sound wave 600 miles an hour. We say that person is a prophet of God. He is a mouthpiece of God. He is speaking the words of God, but he is not God. Such persons, we say, was Abraham, Moses, David, Solomon, Jesus, Muhammad. All, all the chosen messengers of God. As such, I say, love them, respect them, revere them, follow them. But worship is due to God alone. The Father in heaven who is the only God, who is the real God, the one that whom, to whom Jesus addressed his prayer. He is the real God, worship him. That God is not Moses, is not Jesus, is not Muhammad. Now I have to tell you that, not just trying to be different. This is a part of the teachings of the Holy Quran. If I hid it from you, I am dishonest to myself and dishonest to you. I have to tell you, look, this is what the book says. Though we are going together, we are so close. We are the closest to the Christian. We are the closest, my Jewish peasants. You know, they said that Jesus was an imposter. As a lion in the cheek, they hanged him and killed him on the cross. We say no. The messenger of God, the Jews misunderstood him, and now the Christians, they defied him. They made him into a God. But Jesus Christ didn't make any such claims to divinity. That's our reading of the scripture. The Quran testifies to that. The book tells us to tell you, sir. Now, we have a thousand million people in the world today calling themselves Muslims. They say that this book, the Quran, is a book of authority. For him, for them. A thousand million, one billion people on earth. This is the book of authority. There are more than a billion Christians who said this book is the book of authority. So, more than a billion people are involved with this book, more than a billion with that book. Now, we can't brush it aside. You can't brush it aside and say, one thousand, one million Christians just say this is the book of God, word of God, I say, no, put it away. Or you, are going to say the same thing, and say, look, a thousand million people believe in this book as the word of God, is it wrong? I don't want to see it. No. I said, we owe it to ourselves to see now when we are going to death. When we, there is a departure, point of departure, we want to know why. Why have we departed from one another? We must be prepared to have a dialogue. The Bible says, come, let us reason together. 
The Quran says, pull, tell them. Ya Ahl al-Kitab, O people of the book, O chosen Christians, ta'al, come. O chosen Christians, come. Ila kalimat in sawa in baynana wa baynakum. Let me come to common terms as between us and you. Let us get onto a common platform. And the terms and conditions of getting together, I would like you to improve on it. If it is humanly possible, improve on it. Terms and conditions of getting together, the Jews and the Christians and the Muslims, getting together onto a common platform. Number one, Sa'allana Buddha illallah, that we worship none but Allah. None but Allah. Is it asking too much? I ask you. What he's asking you to do is that we worship none but God. Wala mushrika bihi shaykhan, and that we associate no partners with him. Not even Muhammad. That we associate no partners with him. Wala yattakhiz ba'dun abad wa tababun mudunillah. And that we do not take from among ourselves laws and patrons other than Allah. فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَقُلُ شَدُوا بِيَنَّا مُسْلِمُونَ But if they turn back, the Jews and the Christians, if they turn back, tell them that we are Muslims. In other words, we have submitted our wills to the Lord God. Can anything be more reasonable than that? Come, let us reason together. Let us get and on a common platform of worshiping the one and only God that there is, the Father in heaven. He is the real God. The one to whom Jesus Christ. If we take the Bible's authority, that on the cross, Jesus Christ cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. These words are recorded in every Bible of the world, in every language. You have the Bible today in 2,000 different languages, sir. And in every language of the world, these words are recorded in inverted commas. In African Bible, is there. In the Zulu Bible is there, in the Chana Bible is there, in every Bible of the world in 2,000 languages the words have been preserved as, they, as if these are the actual utterances of Jesus. Ella, Ella, Lama Sabata. Which means, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Then again, Ella, Ella, Sabata. In Africans, very far, very far, and you know how it goes, how it goes, you know how it goes. He said, I said, that is the real God. If he is God, who is he crying to? He is crying to the Father in heaven and he calls him Allah. He calls him Allah. That's his name. The Jehovah's Witnesses, we have them among you. I have come across some Afrikaner Jehovah's Witnesses. Very first. Very stubborn people. They say the name of God Almighty is Jehovah. You heard that? You heard that before. Jehovah. That's his name. So I'm asking them, I said, listen, Jesus Christ, on the cross, he cried out, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. Does that sound to you like Jehovah, Jehovah Lama Sabachthani? <laughs> Look, if Jehovah was the name, I said, Jehovah, Jehovah Lama Sabachthani. Does that sound to you like Jehovah, Jehovah Lama Sabachthani? He says, no. I haven't come across a sick Jehovah's witness, yes, witness, yes. He says, no. I said, listen. Ella, Ella, Lama Sabachthani. Does that sound to me like Abba? Abba, Lama Sabachthani? Abba, and he will be father. Says no. Says, listen. Ella, Ella, Lama Sabachthani in Hebrew. Allah, Allah, Lama Taraktani in Arabic. Ella, Ella, Lama Sabachthani. Allah, Allah, Lama Taraktani. Sound similar? Yes. Sounds identical. I said, Hebrew and Arabic are sister languages. They're almost identical. Say Shalom, say Salam. Say Akhar, say Ikhar. Yom, says Yom. Yom Kippur, say Yom Al-Juma. Same. Identical languages. Hebrew and Arabic. If you have any difficulty with Hebrew, the Jews have to go back to Arabic. Because Hebrew was dead for 2,000 years. And Arabic has been alive all its life. 5,000 years is a live language. So you have to go back to Arabic. The Jews have to go back to Arabic to find the meanings of the Hebrew words about which they don't know. <coughs> then in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, we read there that John the disciple he saw a vision. And in the vision he heard the angels in heaven singing. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. You heard that before? Yes. When the Christian goes into ecstasy, he explains, Alleluia! Alleluia! I'm asking what is Alhamdulillah. He will put it. 
Give me money. He said, give me money. No, no. That the Almighty God created another galaxy. So the angels in heaven say, give me money. Hallelujah. He created a star. Another star. The sun of ours is the star is a dwarf. There is another star 40,000 times brighter than this sun of ours. So when God created that, the angels in heaven, they started singing, Alleluia, Alleluia, give me money. What is Alleluia? I am reasoning, as I say, Alleluia, in Arabic and Hebrew. We begin with an exclamation. There's a genius of the language, Hebrew, the Semitic language. Arabic and Hebrew. We begin with an exclamation. Ya! It's Ya Fi! Oh my brother. Ya Ummi! Oh my mother. Ya Allah! Oh Allah! We begin with Ya. Allah Lu. Ya is Ya Allah Lu. Ya Allah Lu. Ya Allah Lu. Ya Allah Lu. That is what we are singing. Oh Allah, you are the only being who deserves worship and praise. Oh Allah, you are the only being who deserves worship and praise. Honor, praise, dignity belongs to God. That God Almighty is not Moses, is not Jesus, is not God. We are talking about Jesus and Christianity because the Quran makes me to speak about it. You see, this Quran here I have in my hand. It is available in the foyer. I made it possible. I brought some along from Durban. This is an encyclopedia. 1920 pages. This is a deluxe edition. This is South African gold, sir. South African gold. And this, this encyclopedia of 2000 pages almost is available to you all for 15 rands with this gold. If you think that the gold is too expensive, you write class. The address is there in the booklet that was given to you, or it's available in the file. Address is there. You send 10 rands. Without the gold, you'll get without it for 10 rands. No gold. See? You'll get for 10 rands. With the gold, it's available. You can have the gold. And you owe it to yourself. You must know. Not that you must be converted. There are a thousand million people in the world who believe in this book. If you want to reason with them, if you want to talk to them, if you want to witness to them, you must know this book to make your task easy. Look, it's only reasonable, sensible. It's lunacy, you can talk to the man about his book about which you know nothing. Make it, make it. And I can tell you this, that this is the cheapest book, religious book that you can buy on earth today. This is the Holy Bible, your Holy Bible. I paid for this Holy Bible this Holy Bible is also got guilty here. The gold is not so glittering as mine. <laughs> I tell you what I pay for it. So the Bible. 43 rands 90 cents plus GST. 43 rands 90 cents plus GST I pay for this. This one here with this gold has 15 rands. Look, I say you owe it to yourself. Now, what does the book say? See, you have a right to know. What does this book of authority, your book of authority, say about my Jesus? For that, in this volume, at the end you'll find an index. Just open the index. Just like in a dictionary. And look under J. Under J. 